for England last night, that Bellingham goal, the perception this morning would have been totally different, would it not, if, if England had lost that? I think it would have been, yeah. It would have been um, difficult to stomach back-to-back -back defeats in those games, wouldn't it? I mean, I think most England fans would have liked more than a, a defeat and a draw from the two games, but that Bellingham goal does change the mood a little bit and ensure, ensures it ends on a high note. I mean, it was a much more positive performance than the Brazil game overall, wasn't it? That, as Southgate was talking about there, they did look pretty fluid, pretty good in the attacking third. They created a lot of chances. Some of the squad players came in and, and did well and, and seized their chances. So there were some positives and uh, yeah, Bellingham ensured that it ended, ended on a high note. Yeah, I'm a little bit troubled by the last two performances, if I'm totally honest. I mean, it continues a record of England underperforming under the most scrutiny against the best sides. I mean, since September 2016, they played 24 games against nations ranked in the top 10. And they've only won seven of those with 10 defeats. And yes, last night wasn't a defeat, but there were still big errors. You know, Jordan Pickford, who has looked so good for England over a number of years, huge error. Lewis Dunk, who's had a really difficult international break, making another error there. And it doesn't feel like England maybe clicked as much as we hoped they would. Having said that, they were without Saka and Kane, who have probably been their best performers over the last three or four years. But a little bit troubling, given the fact they're playing against the Belgium side with a 20-year-old centre-back, given the fact they're playing against the Belgian side without De Bruyne, to not get the win there uh, was a little bit disappointing, I thought. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I like to be half full, though. Let's, let's be half full rather than half empty, because uh, one bright spark... Uh, Kobe Maynou, 18-year-old, he was awarded Player of the Match, his first England start. Right, OK, has he solved uh, quite a nice conundrum here for Gareth Southgate with that performance? I think so. I mean, he's been pretty faultless for England and Man United so far. I mean, he's only played 20 games for Man United. He would have played more if he hadn't got injured in pre-season. Uh, they were expecting big things from him. But it's so exciting when you see an 18-year-old emerge onto the scene. Not many non-Man United fans would have heard of him before this season. And now he's got a very good chance of starting the first game of the Euros alongside Declan Rice after last night. I think he's looked incredibly composed. He's shown a lot of quality. And in a position where England don't have that much strength in, you know, Calvin Phillips out of form. Jordan Henderson's taken a huge dip in the last year. Question marks about whether he should still be in the picture at 33. Conor Gallagher not grabbing his chance against Brazil. It was so great to see Kobe Mainu start this game uh, and put in a performance that suggests that he should be the player starting alongside Rice. Yeah, I mean, massively impressed, massively impressed, but not, not surprised. I mean, you may remember, Rob, a few weeks ago, I included him in my England Euros ah, 11. Yes, so yeah. that, ah, at the yeah. time, risked making me look silly, but <laughs> he has given himself a chance, hasn't he? I mean, he's come in and he's just... I think what's most impressive, we, we know the talent, you know, that ability in, in small spaces. He, he's really forward-thinking as well, isn't he? We saw that with his role in the penalty for the, for the first goal last night, you know, really involved centrally, dribbling around players. But it's that temperament, isn't it? That ability to just come in and manage the occasion, playing at Wembley, even against Brazil when he came on, he looked like he could handle the occasion. And I think that is probably what Gareth Southgate would have wanted to see most from him, you know, that, that ability to, to do it in, on the biggest stage. And, and that should give him confidence going into the tournament, I think. Big tick for Nick. There we go. <laughs> He's happy now. Uh, how about the strikers then? Ivan Tony scored his first England goal from the penalty spot. He said afterwards he knows he's in competition with Ollie Watkins for the squad this summer. I hope I did. <laughs> I hope I did. I'm always going to try and work hard. Even when I'm not playing, I'm always supporting the boys and supporting Ollie, obviously. That's my competition. But like I say, all the, all the time it's friendly competition. I wish him all the best every time he goes on the pitch. But yeah, I felt like I've done, I done well today and hopefully I'll put my. I'll give myself a good chance to put my name forward to uh, be there for the Euros. So, um, is it a case uh, of one or the other? Is it fair to judge them on 90 minutes each when there's a season building up to this? So, OK, if it is one or the other, who gets your vote and why? I think Tony's made a, a really strong case now, hasn't he? I mean, I think he needed that last night as well because... He was basically unproven at international level before last night, you know, only one substitute appearance. Watkins, on the other hand, has played 11 times for England, scoring three goals. So Tony really needed to, to seize his chance, and, and he did that. You know, he, he, it was interesting hearing him before the game talk about not feeling pressure, and we certainly saw that in the way he took his penalty. Obviously, he won the penalty as well. He looked a threat. He linked up well with the players around him, even though... He hadn't played with them before, most of them. So I think there are loads of positives there. Ollie Watkins has obviously had an incredible season and it would be such a shame for him to miss out. But I think 
For Southgate, looking at the two right now, looking at what Tony gave him last night, he may just lean towards Tony. That's, uh, that's probably where I think we're at with the situation now. It's difficult, isn't it? Because, I mean, like for like, Tony is far more similar to Harry Kane in his ability to drop deep, spread passes, etc. Uh, but as Nick correctly points out, you know, Ollie Watkins had the better year, partly because Tony was banned for eight months. But even since he's come back, I mean, Tony's scored four goals in 10 games for Brentford. Ollie Watkins, only Kane and Mbappe have been involved in more goals in Europe. You know, he's an outside contender for player of the year. So it would be pretty brutal for Ollie Watkins not to go. But there might be a situation where with Rashford, with Bowen also in contention, that Southgate doesn't take three out-and-out -out number nines because you might look for a bit of versatility from his third option. The reality as well is, is that Harry Kane's backup is unlikely to play a huge amount of minutes, you know. <clears throat> so I think that makes Tony's ability from the penalty spot even more important, you know, if he can come on in extra time when we're heading towards a penalty shootout and, and give you the confidence of, of putting away one of those spot kicks. I mean, what an attribute that is to have in a knockout situation at a tournament.